Hi and welcome to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Colleen Beamish from Humor Bean Cards and today I am very excited to be using some new products from Lawn Fawn. First, I have the Happy Mushroom die set, which is very fun for creating a little nature scene featuring mushrooms. And then I have the Porcupine For You add-on stamp set, which is very sweet and perfect for Valentine's Day, which we know is coming up. So to start, I did some die cutting. I die cut the large mushroom out of various red and pink card stocks from my stash, just using up my scraps. And then I also die cut the solid background pieces from some grayish brownish uh, card stock. Again, just using the scraps that I had. I am now going in with some ink um, and a blending brush to ink blend the edges of my mushroom tops, the fronts of my mushrooms. I don't know what you wanna call them. I'm sure they have a technical name, but um, this is definitely an unnecessary step. I am just doing it because I think it adds a nice bit of shadow and dimension rather than just looking like flat pieces of cardstock. For the red pieces, I'm going in with some brown ink from Pink Fresh Studio. This is the color Doe, and I find that a brown ink on red adds a nice bit of shadow um, and doesn't look too brown. Like It definitely looks like a deep red, and I really like the effect it has. For the pink die cuts, I'm going in with some Distress Oxide in ink in the color Picked Raspberry. This is a very blendable ink, which makes it easy to put a little bit of color around the edges. I like how this darkens it up a bit. And since I use various uh, shades of cardstock, I like that each mushroom looks very different from one another, like the, the pink, the Picked Raspberry ink looks different on each color of um, cardstock I used. And then on this one, since the paper was so pale, I didn't want to go in with too much ink, so I'm just using what's left on my mat to um, add color to the edges. I did the same thing on the stems of the mushrooms. Like I said, I die cut this out of some gray and kind of like pebble, what I would call pebble colored um, cardstock. And I'm just going in with um, the color Warm Buff from Pink Fresh Studio in the same technique, just putting a little bit of ink on the ends and I don't think it has that much of an effect but I think it's worth the effort. So now I'm just layering up my mushrooms using some liquid glue. I'm just going to put some glue on the back and then layer it up on that solid piece of um, gray cardstock. I think you could probably get really creative with this um, doing various colors, uh, something a little bit more playful. Since I am making a Valentine's Day card I did want to stick with pinks and reds but you could definitely do something uh, kind of crazy, like a blue background with purple on top or something like that. Um, I also like the idea of doing inlay uh, die cutting. So the little circles that are cut out of that front piece, um, you could inlay other colors if you wanted to and make like a rainbow mushroom or something like that. Uh, so yeah, the possibilities are really endless. So now I am adding the stems to the mushrooms and I'm just adding a dot of glue and gluing that onto the back. Very straightforward and easy to do. Um, like I said, you can create a little scene with this die set, but what I will be doing is actually doing kind of a mushroom covered background. Uh, so here are all my mushrooms completed and I love how they turned out. And now I'll be working on the focal point of my card, which is a little porcupine. What's really cool about this stamp set is that as it coordinates with the die set, it cuts out the little hands of the porcupine so that it can hold the various other little stamps. So today I will be using the porcupine and then the little uh, card image um, as if the card has a porcupine holding a card on it. When I'm working with die cut stamped images, I prefer to do the die cutting first and then to line up the stamp with the cutout image. This just makes it easier for me. I find it difficult to line up the die with the already stamped image. So um, this is the way I go about it and I find it much easier. I will say that my porcupine is a little off center, um, but it's nothing too drastic and I don't really mind it. So I'm using some um, amalgam ink from Gina K Designs in the color Obsidian. This is just a really great uh, dark black ink and it works well with Copic coloring, which is what I will be doing to color in these images. I've sped up the coloring process a bit 
and I'm just going in with my palest shade first to put down a full layer of color on the body of the porcupine. I find that I prefer to do one layer of color and then to go in with a second color to add shading. And um, if you don't have a large collection of Copic markers, I would say to just keep layering up the color to add shadow. Um, I'm using, I think, five different Copic markers on this porcupine, all in shades of brown, and I will have all of those linked down in the description. And now is a good time to mention that all the products I use in today's video will be linked down below and are available at scrapbookpal.com. So definitely check that out and head over to Scrapbook Pal to get some crafty supplies for your stash. Um, I'm just adding some light shadowing here. I would not call myself a Copic coloring pro. It's definitely something that I need, or it's good to practice on. I think everyone can keep practicing with Copic coloring. But once I have the body complete, I add a little bit of blush. Uh, I think this is like the perfect step for any critter that you're coloring. Um, it just makes it so cute. And then I did do pink on the nose and ears, but then I decided it should be brown. So I went in with a brown instead. Um, and now I'm going to the spiky part of the porcupine. So again, I'm going in with the lightest shade and then I'm going to add um, a darker brown and then an even darker brown after that. And then I will work backwards. So I'll do my darkest brown and then I'll go back in with this medium brown and then go back in with the palest shade that I have. I find this is the easiest way to get the colors to blend nicely. But again, if you don't have a lot of Copic markers, you could use one or two shades and just keep adding layers of color um, to darken it up. So, um, like I said, I'm making a Valentine's Day card today, which Lawn Fawn has a lot of really great products for doing uh, Valentine's Day cards because they have a lot of really cute critters. And so I want to know if you have a favorite Valentine's Day stamp set or product um, from Lawn Fawn. And if you do, please comment it down below because I'm very interested um, in what you love to use or keep going back to to make Valentine's Day cards. Or maybe um, if you don't make Valentine's Day cards, if you have another favorite Lawn Fawn product. Um, I like to make Valentine's Day cards just for my friends and my galentines. Um, so this will probably be going to um, either my sister or one of my friends this Valentine's Day. So I did some super simple uh, coloring on the card that wasn't really worth showing because I just went in with some red and pink. And then I added some white details with a gel pen and that is my porcupine complete. And now I'm playing around with the layout of my card. This was the hardest part for me or maybe the most time consuming. I originally planned to have the mushrooms all going in like different directions um, and just kind of scattered around the background, but then I wasn't really it just wasn't working out how I imagined it. Um, I should mention that my card base is a piece of green cardstock that is um, cut and folded to be a final A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, and I'm gonna start just sticking down my mushrooms. I think at this point I was kind of like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna just start sticking things down. So I am adding some foam tape to this uh, front mushroom that my porcupine will be standing on. The porcupine also has some foam on its back, um, but I haven't stuck it down yet. It's just on there to figure out my placement and my dimension. So the fun thing about this card is that each mushroom is kind of different with whether it's popped up or flat or whatever. Um, so like I said, this front mushroom is popped up, but then some others I'll just glue right down to the card base and others, um, will have some foam at the top of the mushroom, but then glued down by the stem. So I really just play around until I like the arrangement. Um, something else that you could do is adding um, some texture to the background, maybe some ink blending or stenciling. I wanted my background to be pretty simple because it was gonna be busy with the mushrooms, but it would definitely be easy to add some texture or something else um, if you didn't want it just to be plain green. So like I said, this mushroom will be glued down just straight to the card base. I didn't put glue over the entire back because I did like that the edges were kind of like popped up slightly just because the cardstock was not completely flat. On this mushroom, I'm putting glue on the bottom, but then I'm putting a little square of foam tape at the top so that um, 
it just is like popping up at the top a little bit, but then it can also slip under the mushroom. So it's all about layering and it's just kind of finding what you like the appearance of the most. At this point, I decided not to put mushrooms all over the entire card base. Um, I am adding this one in the top corner, but I kind of liked how it looked having an empty corner. Now, when I put my hands next to the card like that, I'm trying to envision what it will look like when I cut off the edges of the mushrooms because I am gonna cut it down so that it all fits on the card. And to do that, I'm just going in with some scissors and I'm trimming off the excess. I do technically find it easier to do this with a paper cutter or a paper trimmer because a paper trimmer lets you get very close to the edge and make sure that it's all lined up. But I had my scissors right here and sometimes it's more satisfying to watch you like snip off all the excess. So that's what I'm doing and uh, I'll flip it over here and you can see what the card looks like now. So I thought I was done, but then I decided to add in, I had a couple spare mushrooms. So I wanted to add in some more just going off the edge of the card. So I just added glue where I wanted to add a little bit more and I glued down some more mushrooms. Now I waited for the glue to dry before I went in and cut off the excess. Um, you need to give it that waiting time, otherwise it won't stay where you wanted it to be. So now I have a what I imagine as a field of mushrooms with my porcupine, and I'm just gonna go in to add the final details. So first I'm adding my sentiment, which says, love you so mush, like mushroom. Um, and this is from the Porcupine For You stamp set. Not the add-on set, but the original full set. Um, and I am just heat embossing that with some white embossing powder. If you're interested in checking out that stamp set, um, there is another video on the Scrapbook Pal channel using that um, where I did some paper piecing. So I'll link that down in the description for you to check out if you're interested. And then for my mushrooms, I decided to go in with a white gel pen and had details and I went a little crazy with it. <laughs> this step is totally not necessary, but I really like the effect it has. It makes it a little bit more whimsical and just I think um, with this card the details really complete it. So I also added a little um, snail. This is again from the Porcupine For You stamp set and I just did some very simple coloring and then I did the same with a little butterfly, which I actually fussy cut out because it's so small that there's not a die for it. So I popped that up with some foam tape and then I'm gonna go in with a white gel pen and just add a little trail behind the butterfly. And that completes this card. I was thinking about adding another butterfly, but then I was like, okay, please stop. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out and it was so fun to play with these products from Lawn Fawn. Like I said, all of these products are available at scrapbookpal.com, so be sure to check out the description below to shop for these fun products for Valentine's Day. Um, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel because there's plenty of crafty, fun inspiration um, shared every week. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a happy Valentine's Day. Bye!